All right, so I got my notes here. I'm gonna be talking about my last six months as a security engineer at Amazon, a security response engineer at Amazon. This is gonna be my second transition in cybersecurity video. About two years ago, I made a video titled Transition into Cybersecurity, three months as a cloud threat detection engineer at Datadog. And this was me talking about, you know, three months, my, my first three months as a cloud threat detection engineer at Datadog. And this was two years ago. Two years later, today, I'm making a six month update video on six months as a security response engineer at Amazon. Of course, I'm not going into any details about the sensitivities of my job or any specifics. This is just more so of a high level thing. And also kind of talking about my transition from cloud for detection engineering to security incident response engineering from Datadog to Amazon. So as most of you guys know, I've been at Amazon for the last six months doing security response engineering. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the difference in skill sets. I'm still in security operations and also still on the defensive side of cybersecurity, but now I'm doing incident response. I'm no longer on the side of actually identifying the threats or well, not identifying detecting the threats right i'm more so on responding to the already detected threats or going to look for more threats and also responding to those threats so this is definitely like a different sort of like skill set i would say because detection is more so about how do we capture and also immediately identify attackers activities response is more so in my experience about the attacker has done something how do we identify assess scope the actions of the attacker and then from there, how do we contain the attacker's behaviors, the attacker's activities, make sure it doesn't spread further. And then from there, how do we eradicate the attacker? If we've contained, how do we remove the attacker from our system, make sure that they no longer have access to our systems, our application, our data. And then you have the remediation, which is how do we fix the issue. And finally, lessons learned. I, I just literally described the NIST instant response lifecycle, whatever it's called. I'll leave a link to a video I made about it somewhere up on the screen, but it's, you know, moving from that, how do we catch, identify, alert, and signal on the attacker's behavior to analyzing it, assessing it, containing it, eradicating it, remediating it, and then learning from it as well. So it's definitely you no, know, completely different and i've had to have somewhat of a tiny bit of a shift in mindset there with you know focusing on threats and security and response in that sort of perspective coming from a detection engineering uh perspective so as the first thing about this transition the next thing about this transition is with regards to who you're working with on the response side it's completely different from the detection side with detections you're working with engineering platform maybe you know red team working with devops infrastructure whatever the case is partnering with those teams on the response side you're also working with all of those teams right for various reasons right depending on what company you work at but there's also the fact that you're going to be working with legal you might be working with compliance you might be working with hr you might be working with red team as well but it's like once you start moving more towards response you're dealing with a little bit more sensitivity and also a little bit more of a different scope of interactions with who you're actually talking to and interacting with that being hr legal and a bunch of other people compared to detections where you just get out the stuff and then response where you might have to do a little bit more than that. Now, this is not not here to be an expert witness or anything like that, but you know, from what you find, what you identify, your actions definitely have some sort of consequences that might require some different levels of perspectives into what you're doing, hence the need to interact with these different sort of teams. So there's definitely been a difference in regards to how response works and how I've experienced it so far. Hey there. Did you know that 70% of our YouTube viewers are unsubscribed? If you're part of the group, please consider hitting that subscribe button. We're aiming to reach 50,000 subscribers by the year's end and your support would mean a whole lot. Thank you so much for your help with this. And now let's get back to the video. The next thing I want to talk about um, is having a great team and great leadership. I've been super fortunate across my career to just have really great leaders, really great leadership. I don't think I've ever had like a bad leadership experience or bad team experience so far. Can't think of anyone. I've had great managers all through my jobs, great teammates mostly all through my jobs and here it's not any different like i have great leadership i have great uh, teammates as well and i think that's i'm very fortunate to have that so it's been great like you know having the support of your leadership uh, whether in regards to your career in regards to the job and just you know the morale and camaraderie with like you know having great teammates who know what they're doing and also just enjoy the work and also are great at what they do that's been a great thing the next thing i wanted to talk about which i also talked about in my previous video about my three months of the dog in that video i talked about like how i had almost like 
like doubled my compensation from going from analyst to an engineer at that point in time and how that was a significant increase in my compensation. I would also say the same thing from my jump from a threat detection engineer at Datadog to now being a response engineer at Amazon. I'd also say I've seen a significant increase in my compensation between uh, the different roles. So that's definitely something that comes into play. I do think that response engineer is definitely a lot more stressful and has a lot more, takes a lot more out of you than detection engineering. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. And also the company as well determines like what your compensation will look like. And on that same point, I would also mention that another thing that's different with being a response engineer now is being on call. So previously I have never been on call before, whether I was an analyst or I was detection engineer. So this is my first time, my first experience being on call. Um, it's definitely different. I've never, I've not had really bad experiences being on call so far. I mean, I've definitely have to, had to deal with like some pretty major incidents, but it's not so bad. I think um, having a really supportive team helps as well, um, but definitely something that's different for me, getting used to that. I think I'm pretty much used to it now, like being on call or supporting people who are on a call. It's not so bad, honestly, like incidents happen, but you know, we deal with them. And I think the biggest thing is just having the support of your team when you're, when you're on call. It's, it's like the biggest thing ever. So yeah, it's definitely different, but yeah, it's part of the job, uh, part of the response engineer and part of incident response. So yeah, definitely my first experience being on call. I think I said that like seven times already. So there's that as well. And the next thing is continuous learning opportunities. I think it's also something I've been blessed with in regards to my previous roles. I've always had the opportunity to learn something new or build my skill set on something new or expand what I already know in security in regards to, you know, whatever the case is. Like my previous role at Datadog was more so like expanding my skill set on like cloud, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, Kubernetes, SASH platforms, detection engineering as a whole. And that was very good for my career. Very good at learning. Very good for me. I got a lot of knowledge from that. I think now, you know, with the response engineering role at the company I work at right now, it's also a different set of skill sets. I'm learning, you know, of course, response engineering, uh, learning, you know, how to use like case management tools, uh, learning how to, you know, write really good incident re reports, right? Learn how to scope, assess incidents, right? You know, containment, remediation, eradication, all of those things. I'm um, automating response. All of those things are new skill sets I'm learning and also having an opportunity to expand my knowledge and also learn new things, right? So I've definitely had a lot of good learning opportunities so far. And I think those are kind of adding to my knowledge and also adding to my experience from before and, you know, kind of making me a well-rounded uh, engineer in a sense. I think this really ties into my goal of becoming a staff security engineer by the time I'm 30, which is about eight years from now. Time is running really fast. <laughs> Just kidding. But one of my goals of becoming a staff security engineer is having like a holistic skill set in both threat detection, detection engineering and response and response engineering. And I think that um, I got a good amount of experience with like detection and detection engineering in my previous role at Datadog. And now I'm getting more experience with like response and response engineering. So I hope to further develop that skill set and, you know, be able to combine both skills in a way that helps me work towards that goal that I have. I think there are several other skills I want to build in regards to like what I think is going to help me on this journey over the next, you know, eight more years. But um, I think I'm going to on the right path. I think this role, I think this current company I'm working at, this current scope of responsibilities I have right now are leading me on the right path uh, to that goal. And I definitely see myself being here for a very good amount of time. I have a lot of things to learn. I'm building a lot of skills, building a lot of relationships, you know, working on impactful stuff. And it's been great so far. So I thought I'd make this video, you know, as a kind of checkpoint sort of video. Uh, maybe I might, I might make another one at my one year mark um, and yeah, talk about more stuff. Again, obviously nothing confidential or sensitive, but that's it for this video. Just wanted to share this and, you know, also add the fact that, you know, don't be afraid to make the jump in terms of transitioning between roles. Definitely there was a big jump from analyst to engineer for me, like those skill sets, learning those things, you know, building those new capabilities, being in environments I've never been in, having to adapt to new situations. So don't be scared in, you know, making those jumps. If you want to go from like help desk to analyst, like it's very possible. If you want to go from analyst to engineer, it's also very possible. And if you also want to move between engineering roles, it's also very possible. I've now been able to move between detection engineering, cloud detection engineering, to now security and response engineering. Who knows what's next, right? I think I would still definitely want to stay an engineer, but we never know. Maybe leadership might be next. You know, maybe something within security else might be next. Maybe I might just become a software engineer, but maybe not. I don't know. But all I'm trying to say is this, like, you know, don't be afraid to make the jump. Don't be afraid to build the skills you need to make the jump. Don't, fear, don't be afraid to interview for roles that might help you make the jump to whatever role you're interested in. I really wanted to do security response after doing detection engineering for almost two years or, or so. And I decided to make the jump and it, it all worked out. And here I am. I'm enjoying it so far, having a great time, learning a lot. And, you know, I would have never known how great it was on this side or how stressful it was on this side um, if I never decided to make the jump, if I never took that chance, you know, on myself. So yeah, that's it for this video.
video. Thanks for watching. And if you want to see that first video where I talked about my transition from analyst to engineer, I did a dog and my three months time frame there, definitely check out this video on the right of the screen. And if you also want to learn about my first year, my very first year as a cybersecurity engineer at Datadog, what I learned in my very first year of being an engineer in general, definitely check out this video on the right of the screen where I go into all of the details about that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.